in the beginning was the word. Not many average human beings would begin a document with that sentence. That word, that sentence comes from the breath of the Holy Spirit working upon the mind and heart of someone who has been ever since referred to as the Divine. John, the beloved disciple, John the Divine, who was given that proximity to the Sacred Heart as he rested upon the breast of the Lord, was the one who penetrated the depths of that breast and also the inner life of the Blessed Trinity. For that same prologue of the Gospel does contain this expression nearest to the Father's heart. There is in Greek a notion of motion towards, as though there was an orientation towards. There is intimacy in the interior life of the Blessed Trinity. There is relationship in the core of the universe. And the creation of man is something that therefore is caught up in this relationship activity of the world. We are meant to interrelate. We are meant to be orientated towards. We are bound up in a current. This then is the wider context of the Incarnation. The wider context of these Sundays and these feasts. The unpacking of what was given to humanity took several centuries. Once the Edict of Milan in 313 had given Christianity a place of honour in the Roman Empire, although it was not initially placing it as the official religion of that empire. Once, however, it gave freedom and honourability to it as a religion not henceforth to be persecuted, then internal debates came to the fore, because until then it was a question of survival, essentially. But then, with more time, more free energy, the experts could look into all the implications of the faith. And so it was that, first of all, in the Council of Nicaea in 325, the understanding of the faith, Trinitarian faith of Christians, was thrashed out, made more explicit and complete in 381, in Constantinople, the important centre in the East. And by the way, the East was very much aware of theological debate and philosophical debate. It was ahead of the West initially in thrashing out things, although they always looked to Rome for some kind of seal of approval, knowing by instinct there was something in Rome which was solid. But then it came in 431 with the Council of Ephesus that the way in which one of us, our Blessed Lady, was giving to the Lord humanity and therefore could be called birth giver of God because she was giving birth to the one who was God, therefore sorting out the problem of the two natures in one person in Christ. That was, again under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, something which we could see happening bit by bit, a progressive making clear of what was not immediately graspable, because it was very complex. And of course, because things initially were not put down informally, then there was room for things to go wrong. And Arius in Alexandria, very early in the Christian history, as we know, did go off course 
and did base his teaching that there was a time when Christ was not on such readings as what we have today, the first reading, because it was an overworking of what is actually only a semi-poetic bit of writing. We notice actually that it is put in verse form in our lectionary. It's the one from Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24. From eternity, in the beginning, he created me, and for eternity I shall remain. So he would be pulling out these verses, but reading into them things which were not there. For one cannot, on poetry, base theology. And so it took time for this to be made quite clear, that the Logos, the Principium, the Word, is the self-understanding of the Father, but it is a person, it is personal, and they are in relationship. And this relationship, this breathing of love between them is also personal. The bonding is a person, the Holy Spirit. The way in which knowledge comes with grace and illumination is seen in St. Paul's writing to the Ephesians. At the beginning of the letter we have this hymn to the providence and choice of God, his mercy. He is called blessed and the reasons for it are given. And we are caught up in this election, this choosing, this setting apart. We have this grace, this free gift in the beloved. And then he goes on there's a jump actually in the lectionary. It takes it up again at verse 15 of that first chapter. That would explain why I, having once heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love that you show towards all the saints. It's interesting that they've actually maintained the word saints here in the modern translation. It is the original word. Have never failed to remember you in my prayers and to thank God for you. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed, to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind, so that you can see what hope his call holds for you. What rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit. Now the Greek is very dense. In the lectionary that we have there, it is... Uh, dynamic equivalence. It is saying things as we would say them now in current English. The Greek is profound and it is an advantage actually to be able to see what the original words are because they are so dense that one can use them in meditation, in Lexio Divina, and go into the depth of each one. It's like a series of bombs to be detonated. We have such words as Pe fortis menos. Now, force is light, and when that comes into a verb form, it becomes to lighten, and then when it's a person who is enlightened, he is made light. And therefore, we have this past participle, the perfect state, the state of something done. Having the eyes of your heart. Tiscardias, enlightened. So, enlightened, your eyes being enlightened, the eyes of the heart being enlightened, so that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Ecclesios, the church is the called out assembly. Ekkleing, it's called out. We are part of a called-out community. We're called. And to miss the call of a Sunday, the Sunday bell of the church ringing and people not answering, is to miss the invitation of the spouse. We have more important things to do. And how many will pass this year with important things to do but miss the call of God himself? 
what the wealth Plutus Tisdoxes of his of the glory of his inheritance, the sharing that we have in the part of the saints, that is the plot in the inheritance of, that's the notion of it. We have a plot in the inheritance of the saints. Often in Greek they use a second word where we would use an adjective, that is they would say the something of glory when we would say the glorious something. That's just a little parenthesis. So we have this prayer that we may be enlightened in the eyes of our heart. Now, the heart, which has been graced, washed, pacified, therefore, is able, without emotion, to enter into, to perceive. As we begin a new year, it is important to be aware that our hearts need that light. And too much coming into the heart make it difficult for the heart to be serene. Too much unhandled emotion, too many words and messages make it difficult for the heart to perceive. Benedict XVI talked about the hardening of the heart through activism. So before we start this year, it would be well just to calmly look back and say, I will not let this happen. I will let time come to me calmly, one moment at a time, and I will see things as they are, participating in divine knowledge, for as St. Paul says, the eyes of the heart can actually in some way be given light, the light precisely of the Blessed Trinity. And God sees things globally, totally, not just bits of things, not things out of proportion or out of balance. Seeing things as God sees them gives us certain serenity as we attack one more package of time. And so it is that we are aware of the fact that with the Incarnation we are homeward bound. It is well to listen to the word, for word has to do with messages. Lexia Divina is divine reading and puts the soul in touch with the author of truth the one who precisely has more to say to us than we have to him. It is not enough to pray unto, as it is not enough to talk unto someone here on earth. We need to be on the receiving end also when in prayer. And therefore we need to have more knowledge by allowing our hearts to be worked upon by the interior master who more easily can whisper new truths to the heart that is not full of itself. A secret then for the new year, stillness, regular stillness, that God may be God and man may be what he is at the receiving end, not the commanding end of time.